Hi guys, it's Miss Eccles. We're going to be working on ratio tables today and this is the first of the two videos that I'm going to have you watch. Hopefully they won't be too long, but as I said, my videos might be a little bit longer because I'm a talker. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to talk about for this section is equivalent ratios, which we went over in class. A ratio table um, has columns that are filled with pairs of numbers that have the same ratio. So we're going to be working on these ratio tables and here's an example of soda to juice. The ratio is that for every one soda we have three juices. Um, so if we are going with that same trend, then that means that for every two sodas we have six juices or every three sodas we have nine juices. These are all equivalent ratios because they're still expressing the same relationship between the quantities. If you simplified um, the three ninths or the two sixths down, it would still be a one to three ratio for sodas to juice. Um, so you can go ahead and pause the video and copy down these um, definitions and then we're going to move on. So pause the video now before we move on. So this was an example of what we put on the board today um, that you're supposed to put in your notes where we said equivalent ratios. Um, they're the same as equivalent fractions and there's lots of different methods that we can use to figure out which one, um, oops, sorry, I'm trying to move this thing up, um, to figure out whether or not they are equivalent or not. Um, we can use these methods that we talked about today to be able to solve for the missing pieces in the tables whenever we're finding equivalent ratios in a ratio table. So in recent year, this is our first example, I know it says number two, but let's move on with our lives. In a recent year, Joey Chestnut won a hot dog eating contest by eating nearly 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. If he ate at a constant rate, determine about how many hot dogs he ate every two minutes. So the way that we would do this using a table is that they're saying, okay, we've got hot dogs and it's 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes and we want to know how many hot dogs that would be in two minutes and so um, one method that they're showing using this table is that you can find a middleman and we're going to talk more about the middleman later but if you can find a relationship be to go from 12 to 2 you can use that relationship oops sorry we need to divide by 6 we would divide top and bottom by the same number and that's how we would do simplifying or equivalent fractions, um, equivalent ratios are the same way. So we would say, okay, if we can do from 12 to 2 by dividing by 6, why don't we do the same thing with the top? And so we can do um, 66 divided by 6, which is 11. And so that tells us that he can eat about 11 hot dogs every two minutes, which is insane. Um, so, and then they say, just a little note here, that you can check yourself to make sure that you did the right thing by, in reverse, going back and saying, okay, does 11 halves or 11 over 2 still equal the same thing as 66 twelfths? And we can do that by timesing the number 11 over 2 by 6 to get 66 twelfths to check our work. So that's just a, like, a nice little note saying let's how we can, let, that is how we can check our work. All right, so that was an example um, that the book did for us. Now I'd like for you to do an example on your own. Um, we'll do A together and then B will be completely on your own where you'll pause the video. So go along with me here and let's make this table. Um, it says IV fluids is on top and then time and hours is on the bottom. So you're just gonna make um, this nice little uh, table we just need our two sections here, IV fluids on top, time on the bottom. And the story says that a patient receives one liter of IV fluids every eight hours. So one liter for every eight hours. At, the, at that rate, how, find how many hours it will take to receive four liters of IV fluids. So now we're taking this top number and we want to make it a four. So how do we go from one to get to four? And whatever we do there, we have to do the bottom. So to go from one to four, we would multiply times four. Oop, sorry about that. Times four. And then what we do the top, we do the bottom times four as well. Ugh, I don't know why I'm mentally challenged today. I'm sorry. So we've got eight times four is 32. And so our answer for this one is um, it would take 32 hours to receive four liters of IV fluids. 
And that's the kind of way that I want you to explain your answer is by using these words to make sure we come back to the problem and that we're answering the right thing. All right, so for B, to make cranberry jam, you need 12 cups of sugar for every 16 cups of cranberries. Find the amount of sugar needed for four cups of cranberries. Go ahead and um, set up this table on your own, and I'd like for you to come up with this answer. I'd like for you to press, press the pause button now and do this question on your own. All right, so on your table, you had 12 over 16 for sugar to cranberry ratio, and we're trying to figure out then how much sugar do we need for four cups of cranberries. So we were at 16 cups, now we're at four cups. So to go from one place to the other, and I'm not gonna use this little middle section here because I know that to go from 16 to four, I can just divide by four. I don't need that middle man. And what I do the bottom, I do the top. And so I've got 12 divided by four, and so hopefully your answer was three cups of sugar. So three cups of sugar is where you should have landed. All right, so that concludes this video. If you log into the next video, it's going to be on um, finding those missing values when it's not so obvious to go from like a number like 16 to four. We'll need that middleman for sure. All right, thanks guys. Go ahead and stop the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.